Hey everyone, welcome back to Dev Parkour. In this video, I want to show a, a technology called Mailer Send. Uh, a few weeks back, I ran into an issue with uh, SendGrid um, and decided to look and see what else was out there uh, that I could use. I came across uh, Mailer Send, and I, so far, I've been really impressed. Um, they they have a free tier, which is perfect for what I'm doing. Um, and so, in this video. I want to show how to integrate MailerSend with both C Sharp and PHP. So let's get started. So like I said, we're going to use MailerSend, uh, and there is a free tier uh, that uh, gives you up to 12,000 emails per month. And you can see I've already created an account here. I'm just waiting for my account to be verified, uh, which actually happens in the next couple minutes here. Uh, but they, they have, a, have a pretty simple, straightforward onboarding process. Just go through the steps. And then uh, you can use either the an official library or the that base URL. Uh, for C Sharp, because they don't have an official library, we'll actually use that base URL, uh, which is documented here. Uh, there's actually a, an email endpoint based on that base URL. Uh, you post to that endpoint with this, this JSON request body and you send an email. It's as simple as that. So now we'll pull up uh, Visual Studio. I'm actually working with a, a project that I, I used as a, uh, the basis for a, a video that I used in the past um, to send uh, Slack invites. Uh, and in that video, I compared uh, old school ASP.NET web forms with Razor pages. Uh, right now, I'm just kind of reorganizing some of the code that, that already exists. Um, you can see now I've, I've, I've gotten into uh, Mailer Send, and now I get my dashboard instead of that, that whole onboarding process. Um, but if we go back to the code, uh, basically all I'm doing is taking the old SendGrid code and, uh, and extracting it out in, into its own function. Uh, I opted not to actually join the free tier. I'm still using kind of like the introductory onboarding tier, which I think is 100 emails a day or something like that, um, just for sake of, uh, you know, I didn't want to put in credit card information on camera, obviously. Uh, so here I am uh, extracting out the, the SendGrid specific code into a, a its own method. Uh, basically what uh, we'll do is we'll pass back uh, the HTTP status code and it looks like realistically the only thing that we need as input is the email address uh, everything else is is pretty much static we just need what email address are we going to send this slack invite link to and that's all the send grid code nicely encapsulated away uh, we send it off to send the email off to send grid and return the response status code and now we're going to do something similar for uh, mailer send now, MailerSend doesn't have an API for C Sharp like SendGrid does, uh, so we are going to write this ourselves. But the uh, the the interface, the, the method signature, is going to be exactly the same thing. We're going to return an HTTP status code. We're going to take in the email address, and now we're going to do something. Um, so here, instead of calling the send with SendGrid. Uh, code we're gonna call send with mailer send and we'll just send a post request to that api.mailersend.com slash v1 slash email endpoint so of course we'll need an HTTP client we'll use the post async method with that uh, specific endpoint as the URL and now we need some content because we need the to send the post body along uh, as you can see in the the um, method signature there. Uh, since this is JSON, it makes sense to do JSON content. But in order to do that, we actually need another package, system.net.http.json. Not an issue. We'll go ahead and grab that from, from NuGet. And then uh, I actually didn't remember what the, the interface to this package was. It looks like there's a JSON content.create method that we have to use. So we'll do that. But we don't have the object to to pass into it quite yet. So let's build that up. We're going to do an anonymous object, um, and basically follow the format that's uh, on the right side there uh, in in the request body. Uh, 
So we need the, the from address with the email and the name, pulling that from, from our secrets uh, code, our secrets class. Uh, the two is just an email address. We don't have a, a name for that. Uh, and it turns out that that actually has to be an array if you look closely on, on the right hand side. And then the subject, which we'll pull from just hard coded text. And then the text of the email uh, is um, just the, there's there's static text for the email. Similarly with the uh, the HTML for the HTML email. And that's about it. And now we can pass that body object into JSON content create. Now, of course, this is an async method, so we need to uh, await the the uh, result of that post async method. Um, and of course, we also expect an HTTP status code to be respond to, to be returned from this method. So let's save the the results of post async in, in a variable response message, and then re we'll return response message dot status code. And at this point, I would say we are all done, uh, except we are actually not all done. We discovered that later when we try to publish to production and uh, go check that out at about the 13 minute mark. So now we're gonna switch over to PHP. Uh, they do have a, a PHP SDK, which you can find on GitHub here uh, or through the documentation. And basically all we're gonna do is copy and paste their, their example code um, and, and fill in the blanks. Uh, we are using this in the context of uh, the, the Pales uh, action mailer uh, package. So there is a little bit of structure that we need to do uh, in order to make it work as a, a so-called transport for Pales uh, action mailer. Uh, so we're just going to create a new file here in the transports folder and we'll call it mailer send transport. And for the structure, uh, th because this is a, a service kind of like SendGrid, we're more or less going to follow the same pattern that, that we used for the SendGrid transport uh, when I wrote that many, many years ago. Um, just remove the, the guts of the deliver message uh, and change a couple things around um, that realistically we should probably change around in the, the uh, SendGrid uh, transport as well. Uh, switch over from uh, username and password to API key and clean up some of the other code. And here we'll just, uh, you know, replace their, the, the blanks in their example code with what we're actually using. So uh, API key gets replaced with our API key. Um, recipients gets replaced with uh, how, how we, how we build up recipients, uh, and how we're tracking recipients. And apparently, I was having some issues writing code uh, when I when I wrote this uh, this day. So here we go. Now, now I've got it working. And now for the actual message, uh, we have to uh, change a couple more things around. The, I, I guess those come from settings that we pass in, right? And then the message we need to get the subject. And then for the uh, HTML and text, we'll need to do message.renderHTML and message.renderText, same as we're doing on the SendGrid side. Again, all this code is, is available on GitHub. Uh, this, uh, this particular project is, is, uh, is an open source project. So that about does it on the PHP side. Uh, but of course, we do want to suggest the MailerSyn uh, package uh, right. If if someone is using the um, this 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 pales action mailer package, we want to make sure that they actually have a transport. So we suggest SendGrid. We also suggest mailer send, and then it's up to uh, whoever consumes this package to decide which transport they want to use and install the appropriate package. Uh, so here we're figuring out what what um, what the current version is, so that we can depend on the current version or better because that's what we coded to. Um, and we're now we're, we're kind of doing some housekeeping, uh, making sure everything works and is, is uh, you know, essentially will compile. 
and we'll tag it uh, with a new version and go off to uh, packagist and make sure that it's picked up the, the updated version of the package, which it has not because this particular package is not set up to auto update. I think it is now, but at the time I recorded this video, it was not. And let's actually use this package in a in a real project. So we're going to go off to Glass Minnow. Uh, if you haven't been following the channel, Glass Minnow is the uh, project that I've been taking from a legacy application. I wrote it a long time ago, and I'm turning it into a a, um, a cl kind of cloud native modern application. So here I'm just adding some some more configuration. So you can see that uh, there's a uh, some settings if you want to use SendGrid. There's some settings if you uh, don't want to use a mail service at all. It'll just use uh, kind of the the default uh, PHP mail app or uh, mail function, which kind of uses uh, the old school send mail under, under the hood. Uh, but here I'm upgrading uh, Action Mailer to take advantage of the mailer send integration that we just added. Apparently the Docker container wasn't running, so uh, nothing happened. But now we can see, uh, we can get into the application. And the way we're gonna test this is by trying to register a user. And just for purposes of, the, of this video, I just uh, commented out the, the code that I didn't wanna use. So we'll go over to the register page. We'll enter a new user and password. And apparently that one already existed. Let's create a new one. And we get this error. And this is because uh, in my rush to, uh, to clean some things up, I got the order of statements wrong. So let's fix that up. Let's push that. Let's update packages, blah, 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 blah. And let's see if it works. And it doesn't, we get a different error. Uh, and this is actually because we did install MailerSend in GlassMinnow. We recommended it in the, the upstream package in, in Pales Action Mailer, but we didn't actually install it in GlassMinnow. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's install the exact same uh, package, the exact same version with the exact same version constraint, and it'll work this time, right? Uh, no. Hmm. What's going on? Well, it turns out that, uh, again, in our rush to record this video, we didn't actually provide an API key, as we'll see in a minute. Let's grab the last 20 lines in the log from the Docker container, and we will see that please set API key in SDK options. Okay, so we forgot to set an API key, but we got all the way through to uh, to, to that point. So uh, we'll call it a win. But now let's jump back to C Sharp land, uh, because I did mention that there was an issue with that. It turns out that we totally forgot to account for the API key. Uh, and if you scroll down to the bottom of the kind of the the uh, the raw API documentation, um, I believe it's there, uh, general API resources authentication. You do in fact need to authenticate with the API. So let's set the, that authorization header. Uh, luckily for us, that's pretty easy in C Sharp land. We just need to add one line, client.default request headers dot authorization equals new authentication header value and the scheme which is bearer and the api key which is secrets dot mailer send key and with that we can publish the project and upload it and now we have issues here too man we're we're, we're not doing we're not not a very good streak so uh, I did eventually figure out what was going on here, but not on the video. Uh, it turns out that this uh, server was trying to look up the api.mailersend.com uh, uh, host uh, and was getting a, an IPv6 address back for it. Um, this server, however, did not have an IPv6 uh, IP address. It just, it just didn't. So no matter how many times I clicked that button, it will not work. I even debugged it locally, as you can see here, to make sure that all of my code was was right. Uh, and you'll see in the bottom right-hand corner, if you look closely, I do, in fact, get a, an email from 
mail are sent. I checked API permissions. I checked that I'd gotten the authentication header right. Uh, I was banging my head against this for a, for a good amount of time. Uh, and then eventually I decided to go really low level and see what I was getting back for the hostname resolution. What I did, I, I executed the command uh, host. That's my DNS lookup tool of choice on Linux. Uh, I did host api.mailersend.com and got an, uh, a v6 IP address back. So that was fun. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Uh, click subscribe and click that notification bell so you'll be notified when other videos come out. I really appreciate that. This channel wouldn't be here if it, if it weren't for all of you wonderful people out there. Uh, and if you have any comments, questions, topics for future videos, go ahead and leave a comment down in the comment section below. I really enjoy reading those and, and responding to everybody who, who writes. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.